So as promised, this is my video on how to dry a long hair dachshund. So this is blowing out like for a dog show. I use a forced air dryer um, with or without heat, but the key is a preferably a forced air dryer um, that has a concentration nozzle. And I start with the feet, especially on the front. What I'm going to do is get the vast majority of the moisture out of this hair. So just some thoughts on when you're blow drying the dogs. Until they are totally dry, they can it can change how the coat is going to lay. So if they are naturally pretty straight and you don't get them totally dry, it's going to stay straight. But if they're naturally not straight and they are not totally dry, then it will start to curl. So I'm using a force dryer with a concentration nozzle and I'm starting with the, the feet and the legs. It's the dense hair, it holds a lot of uh, moisture. So this is how I'm going to try and ensure that I don't have extra moisture that's going to uh, wick out of the coat of one place onto the rest of them and make sure that it's totally dry. So start with the feet and the legs because they will take the longest to actually be dry. So those are mostly dry. Um, the key with the force dryer, you want to make sure you're blowing the hair in the direction you want it to stay. So as you can see, I did the top of his head. Now I'm getting his cheek going in the direction that I want the hair to go. Never use a concentrator on long hair, ever. All it's gonna do is create a big mess. It will swirl and create knots. So I'm specifically avoiding the long areas. Doing legs, feet, top of the head, the neck. Now you're gonna see that I can move up the neck, again, avoiding that long hair on the bib. Holding on to the ear, again, so it doesn't spiral and get into big knots. The legs take a long time. Or at least they seem to take a long time. Oh, he had a little thing in his. This is one of the bonuses of using a force dryer is you can actually see all the way to the skin. So you can see how the skin looks. You can see if you have any marks. Um, if you're in an area that has ticks, this is a great way to see them. Um, so that's one of the bonuses of having a forced air dryer. You can see I'm holding the long hair. I don't want it to get tangled. So now moving to the body, again, blowing the direction that you want the hair to lay. I always do this on a table. I always make my dog stand. It's the only way that I think that you can really see how the hair is going to go. Now this dog has a cowlick on his neck and it goes all the way from the top of his neck down over his shoulders and then it actually kind of comes down onto the show side. So I will show you later in this video how I work with that. But in general for blow drying a dog like this, you're gonna start at the back. You're gonna use a back and forth motion. And you are working your way towards the front. You can see the hair lays nicely when you do this. So here's this cowlick I was talking about. 
one of the secrets I have for you get dealing with calyx and you'll see it more when I go to the finish work is I don't fight the cowlick I just work with it so you'll see when I'm up on his neck I'm kind of blowing that hair towards the show side because that's the way it naturally wants to go so again still using the concentrator back and forth motion in the direction you want the hair to grow grow the direction you want the hair to lay This is that cowlick like I was talking about. So still using the concentrator, starting from the bottom, working your way up, just like starting from the back, working your way forward. So now I've gotten the vast majority of the moisture out of the coat. I'm going to work to furnishings. So I've removed the concentrator. Now I'm working with just a straight hose nozzle and a comb. This is just airflow and a comb. There's not really heat in this process. Um, so just like your probably know with your own hair if you blow dry your own hair with heat a lot it will um, kind of frizz out it'll you know for hair will get dried out so I like to use forest dryer primarily as this is the great a great way to dry the hair without causing damage so I like to use a comb because it separates the coat so at this point I'm using no concentrator because I have longer hair I'm working with and I'm just set, essentially using a comb to, to separate the hair, comb through the hair and let that air blow the water off of the hair shafts. Again, don't ever blow in the direction you don't want it to go necessarily unless it's really wet and you're gonna ensure that you get it to go the right direction afterwards. But as you've seen with this dog, I have done very little blowing in a different direction. So I'm still blowing in the same direction that I want the hair to lay, but I'm combing in the other direction. So you can see here without the concentrator on the air just blows straight there's no knotting or, or swirling of the coat so this is how I do the long hair like here on the bib I tend to blow dry my dogs front chest hair out or up and then blend it as it comes down on the sides So don't forget, when you're blow drying, that underneath part of the dog can have very thick hair, a lot of undercoat. So make sure you're getting that all very dry, because if the outside feels dry but the inside is not dry, as soon as you put them in a crate or they lay down, then that moisture can wick out to other parts of the coat, or even that same area. And that's where how you get wrinkles and kinks and curls because the hair really isn't dry. So working on pants now. 
this is challenging if your dog doesn't want to sit. It's all about mastering the hand skills. Um, I, again, am using the comb. I am trying to get the hair dry and straight and also mostly down, but you have to get all of the hair out. So you have between the legs, you have by the hawk hair, um, and then of course you have everything up by the anus and the challenge is to get it dry but not have it flip up the wrong direction. So I try to get it mostly dry. As you can see when you're going from this direction, that top hair is going up. So what you'll see is I'll go back over the top now and make sure that I am training the hair the direction that I want it to go. So again, combing through the hair, the direction you want it to go. The very back is mostly dry at this point. So I'm dealing with the top coat here, the thighs, um, and making sure that's dry. Now, you can also do the rear feet when you do the front feet. I just tend to work in sections. So, but when you do these legs, the rear legs, you're gonna use the concentrator again. Again, caution of the long hairs. So if your dog has a very long coated tail, Make sure you watch that as well. But I'm really focusing the dryer on the short part of this. So as you can see, I'm holding on to the pants and I'm doing the hawk, the feet, and then the thigh on both sides. So as you can see here on the chest, you know, let your dog sit. One of the bonuses of when you let them sit is that the bottom part of the chest hair actually comes forward a little more. So that makes it easier. And then I also let them sit while I'm doing ears normally. Um, but the key here is the dryer is in the direction that you want the hair to ultimately be. Now we're going to work on finishing drying. This is where we're dealing with cowlicks, um, hair that doesn't lay the way you want. So this is a hot dryer. This is a very small round brush. I think it's called a one inch round brush. The key here is to make sure that you have heat, but not too much airflow necessarily because the point here is you're trying to heat the hair make it go where you want and then it needs to cool so it's set so here's this calic I was talking about you're using a round brush I am training that hair to lay down so again like I said earlier I'm not fighting this cowlick if I tried to make that hair lay straight or make it go down the middle it, it would not work. It would just cause a headache. So what I'm doing is I'm working with the cowlick. I'm going in the direction that it wants to go, but I'm pushing it over so that in the profile it looks like a clean, smooth line because the hair is just pulled over and laying slightly to the side versus laying straight. With a red dog like this, you can't cut this off it would just turn a different color and look awful. So I don't wanna cut it. I want to work with the hair and 
get the outline to look smooth. So this round brush, I'm just pulling the hair down and getting it to lay on the show side, the side it wants to be on, versus fighting it and trying to make it lay flat down the back. So a hot dryer is how you're gonna finish things because sometimes that force dryer or if you're in a damp climate or something, you'll, you'll need to go to the hot dryer. So again, here's the hot dryer. I've done the round brush. Now I'm using a slicker. I don't wanna make sure this is really dry. Because as I said before, any moisture will undo everything that you've just done. So I use this slicker. Um, it gives me a little more control than a comb does necessarily. It gets it tighter down on the body. So I have another spot here on the neck that I want to do a little more on. I would use the round brush, continue to make sure this is all really dry. Hard to see in this wind, but hopefully you can see how the air actually wants to be, the hair actually wants to lay, and how when the wind blows you can see how he actually has a part on the farther side of his neck. So now I'm using the hot dryer, not super hot, but warm on his ears. The ears tend to get crinkles, as I call them. It's like kinks in the hair. Um, and I find that uh, a little heat pulls that better and makes that straight. Um, so again, the hot dryer. It is done after the dog is mostly dry and you're just using it on trouble spots. Places that you want to make sure are straight. Places that you're concerned aren't totally dry. And you see I put no product on this dog. You've watched this process of the drying. This is just using tools. So the force dryer, the hot dryer, the round brush, the comb, and a the slicker. There's no product on this dog. This is a follow-up force dryer with the concentrator on the legs, on the short hairs. Then you're going to use the force dryer without a concentrator on the long hairs. So once you have the top coat, the legs, the head dry, then you use the force dryer without the concentrator to work through the rest of the coat, get that primarily dry work through the rear, and then you go to the hot dryer. Round brush if needed to work on trouble spots, ears, or other areas that tend to get some crinkles in there. And then any touch up that you need to do with a hot dryer. Now, if you can't get your dog's coat to lay that you really want, you can use either a towel or a wrap made with like a Lycra. As you can see, he thinks this is a fun part. It means he's gonna to go to a show. So there's lots of different sites you can use to get this or a towel, but the secret is you want it tight and you want to try and ensure that the area between the neck and the shoulders does not have wrinkles. That is the challenge of toweling anytime. So that's why I like the Lycra suits. And when I do toweling or using a suit, 
I use three pins. So I use one under here at the chest, just beyond the chest. So a big safety pin there. And then as you can see where the holes are, I actually do two pins in the back. I don't put one under the tail. I use two, one on each side. So I take it and then I pin it under the thigh like that. And I do that on both sides. So that's something you can do. If you use a Lycra, it tends to make it um, a shiny. It, it'll shine the coat up a little. But that's just an alternative for um, trying to get it a tighter look. You're going to have to practice with that a few times. Um, and that's it. Thank you.